we tend to be um, a little bit uh, negative bias towards BMW. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as mom raised us better than that, if we said something mean, she's like, now you have to say seven nice things. Oh, yeah. And that kind of thing. So totally forget about our that. Our new rule for the podcast, if we're going to rip into BMW, we got to say something nice about it too. That's fair. So we have a new segment idea called Good Beamer, Bad Beamer. So, <laughs> okay. I saw that on the notes. I, didn't, I thought it was like an article or whatever. No. So, that's hilarious. So, that's the thing. so I want to say a very funny it was a headline i didn't look too much into it but we'll, we'll dive in, in a second a bmw headline that just of course and then an actual pretty cool bmw news thing that we learned cool this last All week right. so okay so we still get to rip on them still get to rip on them but we got to say something nice gotta say something nice yeah okay. gotta build them back up a little bit can't be all can't be all rude because the build-up is actually <laughs> pretty freaking cool all um right. something i haven't seen um i it's something that i don't think any other german car manufacturer would be confident enough to do so oh. it's very interesting. It's actually a very cool moment for me. Wow. So All let's, right. let's get into it. So first one, it's a Jalopnik article. Okay. Um, let me just read you the headline and then we'll get into it. BMWs are bursting into flames so they don't have to be cop cars. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so apparently they've had to um, basically curb all of their BMW police cars. Okay. Um, because they're having, and I'm assuming it's related to the whole O-ring on the injector issue. Yeah. Where they're just catching on fire. So they're not reliable anymore. Wow. So they've had to curb, um, I think all of them. It's with the, oh, it's the diesel engine. I didn't realize it was the diesel. Oh, one. I thought okay. It was, yeah. Cause they don't use the those M57. here. No, unfortunately that would be cool, but, I don't um, think but it anyway, would be cool. I think it would be cool. <laughs> I mean, they have a, they have the, whatever it's 328D. You or shouldn't run from the cops regardless. <laughs> I was just saying <laughs> they have like souped up beamers. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> catch on fire. So they've had they've had to get rid of their three series, five series, and their X five SUVs. Oh wow! So it's like it affects a lot. And I don't know. I don't think they added how many <laughs> add of like stuff catching on fire. <laughs> yeah, speaking like, totally of fire. unrelated, but it just works. That's so, funny. Um, they're saying. Um, here we go. In one particularly depressing switch, the police in this place in the middle of England um, have replaced their three liter BMWs with Peugeots equipped with a 1.2 liter turbocharged engine. So that's what a downgrade. Sad, Is that right? what it says? Yeah, what a downgrade. <laughs> so anyway, that I thought sucks. that was super funny. So apparently that title just I thought was really funny. But that is yeah, so funny. Apparently there's some issue happening now. What, so what is the title out. again? So they don't have to be cops. Yeah, so they don't have to be cop cars. That's so funny. Because yeah, which I think um, like this look of cop cars is my favorite ever. Yeah. It looks so cool. Yeah. With the yellow and the blue checkered and the blue lights and everything and the little, like the Jason Bourne. Like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it reminds me of. Yeah, that's all I can think of. Yeah. Way better yeah, impression than mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so apparently, here we go. Whatever the reason for the combustions, it seems a worrying number of BMW police cars have begun igniting, them, igniting on forces in the UK, specifically cars operated by... Um, that aging diesel engine have started wow. spewing fire after N57 being used in high diesel. speed pursuits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so could you imagine this guy's like, <laughs> it's just like what it's like the need for speed thing is like heat five. And then like the BMW is coming <laughs> in and then there's like, <laughs> yeah, they're just burning on. But anyway, so bad Beamer. What if it's like <laughs> one of the engineers <laughs> at BMWs testing out a new model running away from the cops and he's just like oh no they're gonna get me he's like, activate <laughs> burning BMW. They, <laughs> they're burning off it's like yes oh my god it's like some conspiracy high that'll up. be that's bmw's version of diesel gate <laughs> yeah right Oops. that's their Looked diesel gate it was the diesels <laughs> <laughs> the folks like and these ours doesn't explode i don't know what the heck accent that German was too. <laughs> <laughs> right that's the same accent america's just over here like <laughs> like rv 8s don't put another free yeah you didn't yeah. <laughs> um so anyway brad right. beamer so Bad beamer? let's build them good back beamer. up a little bit good beamer i think you saw this announcement too mm -hmm. bmw has officially it's brought sick. alpina performance on so they're they purchased it they purchased the brand and they're going to be co-oping so it's always been this caused me to look it up a little bit because mm -hmm. it is a weird relationship because yeah. like apparently alpina started let me see. I looked it up in here. They started in the 60s building a dual carb for the BMW 1500. And then they were oh. just a BMW tuning company. So they yeah. were essentially like, I mean, they were like an IROS motorsport, honestly. They were like that yeah. type of a thing where right. yeah, they the were just trying to get, parts and yeah. And so they would have like the, the BMW 2000 Alpina and it was just something they, they would um, enter into like races and stuff like that. So they mm -hmm. were a performance company. And then somewhere along the way, um, they, as they were maximizing the power, they started like adding things to the interior, adding things to the styling, things like that. And they formed this weird relationship with BMW where they're not, they're not like a manufacturer, but BMW allows them to create and license and sell a modified right. version of their vehicle. Yep. So 
what I think is really cool is, so this is like a grassroots thing. This is just like a, it's honestly like, um, uh, I don't know how to say it. The Ralph Welt, like wide body right. thing for Porsche. Yep. Yep. It's something like that. But I think it's so cool that the OEM purchased it so that they yeah. purchased it now and acquired it. I think it sounds like it's still going to be run. Well, it must've been so popular. And I didn't, I like same yeah. thing. I saw the title. Right. I started researching it. I didn't actually know that it was a s- completely separate company yeah like i thought it was just another yeah. lane of yeah. bmws right. like they do like a trim level yeah something yeah. you know this edition and right. other cars do that too um i just thought it was that but right. i didn't know it was like yeah, some like a whole thing. thing and now it is just right a thing so i think it's really cool because and this is where this is where my statement came earlier i don't see like porsche seems to put themselves like above that like they wouldn't they wouldn't acquire ralph well they've done all right. their own engineering because well, they, they do, do their gt3 gt3 rs right. gt2 rs they right. do their high trims right yeah. but how cool is this for bmw to recognize and now actually put their money where their mouth is and fund the thing to say hey people appreciate these alpina builds right let's just acquire it let's help them out because apparently forget what one of these last i think 2020 in the pandemic year was yeah. the biggest year for alpina yet really they grew the most in that year and huh. so I think they delivered the most cars they had or something like that. That's but, interesting. So they're, they're, I'm glad they're experiencing a lot of growth that way, right. which is cool. Um, Cause yeah, I guess right now I think they do a five, a five series, a seven series. And then the X five, I think they have a pine. They're just clean stuff. too. They're really nice. So looking. they're the statement I got out of the stuff that I found is yeah. that um, they're like niche, like how, why they've become valuable is yeah. because they tune the maybe more base model cars. They're not taking an M card, making an right. Alpina. Right. They're taking a regular 540i or whatever right. the model is now right and making an alpina edition where it's get it's got performance and horsepower right. close to an m car exactly. so they're making it basically an m car not quite as much but then also increasing the um luxury part of it as right. well so it's a like that more comfortable piece more luxury. luxurious but then um higher performance and everything as well yep. which is a really cool mix like right normally you get a tuning company say like for audi volkswagen it's like apr is a really big one right they're focused strictly on horsepower. Right. You don't have like the APR edition, right. like s- super high quality Italian leather exactly. stitch seating exactly. or like electronics or like yeah. other stuff like that. I know they do some stuff, but it's all performance based. They'll do like different steering wheels, for example, but right. it's like a carbon fiber right. performance based one with with right. like the RPM gauge on it right. or something like that. Right. There's not an interior trim package for whatever like for the APR right. tune is not like oh sweet i know it's going to come with better the brown leather seats now and all this other. like yeah. it's not that but they they completely transform these cars It'd be interesting to see how many pieces they actually touch like if there is like a quantity of yeah that'd like be hey cool if it's see. an alpina it gets whatever it is 2600 extra parts that we yep. manufacture that go on the yep. car or something but but anyway thought that was really interesting and like yeah, huge really props cool. to bmw as much as whatever i haven't had great experience with my J- again janky used cars we not have a nice limited one. experience to be fair this is right. a good beamer bad beamer or good beamer right. side we haven't had a lot of experience bad beamer the experience we've had has right. been horrible right actually not myself i've had yeah. oh i've had, had good and bad. bad i've had good and bad yeah, you've my good. uh whatever 325 yeah. i convertible the thing yeah. is perfect but it was a hundred thousand yeah. miles yeah. for a 95 they're, so i mean they're great cars but but yeah just from our personal experience or whatever i can't <laughs> dog up too much it's not like i've driven all these brand new m3s and been like it's still not refined like right, i'm sure right. i would love that but and dude, but anyway is there anything cool. as far as like what's around still today from older cars yeah there's not a lot of uh, there are but in the lane of like really awesome looking cool old yeah. like 90s cars yeah e36 m3 oh, yeah. is definitely up there same with well, the e30 m3 right. but the e36 has just got that 90s style yeah, and shape the, and the e46 too those same. three yeah. generations of three series have been like the most i would i'd probably say the most well the most iconic series of car over that many generations because like right. even like the 240s and stuff like yep. a 240 from the 90s there's like a there's a there's a year span that's like the one that right. everybody recognizes as like a, as the car or whatever. Same with Audis, like B5s and then right. B6. I don't really like the A4 and stuff. They, they haven't like held over time the yeah. way that the BMW championed it from the 80s all the way through rally stuff to like touring cars and all this other yep. all the way through the E46 and then even the next generations after right. that when they changed their naming structure that I don't get anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway, so good Beamer, bad Beamer. Cool. We'll probably like bring that it. back. That's but, a good section. So yeah, tear them down a little bit, build them back up, kind of leave them level. <laughs>